our composition is looking a little busy right now. Every point is connected to every other point, and so there's a lot of lines on the screen. And especially if we turn up the number of points, it just really is looking kind of busy. Maybe you like that, uh, but let's try something different. Um, let's make it so that the points are only connected by a line if they are under a certain threshold distance. So in order to do that, we're going to compute the distance between each pair of points and then test to see if it's under a threshold and only draw it if it's under that threshold. To calculate the distance, we're going to need to drag out a mathematical expression patch and uh, command two to edit the mathematical expression. We're going to be using the formula for Euclidean distance. It doesn't really matter that that's what we're using. Uh, you don't really need to know what this is, you can just copy it down. Um, so we're going to take the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared plus z1 minus z2 squared. And one last parenthesis. Uh, as we type these variable names, you can see that they pop up as inputs to the mathematical expression. And we can rename this distance to keep things clear. The result of this will be the distance between the two points. So now we can plug in x1 and x2, y1 and y2, and the z's. So now we have the distance between the two points. And now we're going to use a comparison, uh, sorry, a conditional patch to uh, make sure that the lines aren't drawn if they're over a certain threshold in length. So we're going to pass in the distance as the first value, then we're going to say the condition is lower than, and our second value is the threshold, so let's say 0.3 to start. The result's going to be a boolean that represents whether the, the line is longer than the threshold value. And if we route that boolean into this enable, we can see that the lines only are displayed if they're a certain length. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Let's increase this uh, threshold value. Great. Right now, the lines pop on and off uh, very instantaneously. There's no fade in or anything, and it kind of gives it a little bit of a jarring look. And so what would be cool is if we could control the color of the line based on the distance between the two points. So to do that, let's drag out an RGP color patch, RGB, not RGP. And we can hook up the color to the start and end color here. And then, for example, we can adjust this alpha slider to change the opacity of each of the lines. And so you can see that this alpha value is between 0 and 1. So what we want to do is we want to pass in an alpha based on the distance that is between 0 and 1. 1 being when the points are ha have no distance between them. And then 0 would be maybe when the points are at that max uh, distance threshold. So the first step here is, because we're going to be using this, this distance threshold in a couple places, let's insert an input splitter. And we'll call this max distance. And now we're going to need to use a second mathematical formula patch. And we're going to use this formula to normalize the distance based on the maximum distance. So let's press Command 2 on that. And we're going to use a pretty simple formula. We're going to say max distance minus distance divided by max distance. And we're going to pass in the max distance here. We're going to pass in the distance here. And we can name this normalized distance. So the result of this is going to be a number between 0 and 1, which is what we want. And uh, let's pass it into the alpha to see what happens. So it's a little bit hard to see, but you can kind of see that l l points that are far apart are have a low opacity and points that are close together have a higher opacity. Uh, let's increase the max distance. We might be able to see this a little bit better. This is starting to look pretty cool, I think. Um, 
we can further refine this formula here by adding in uh, an offset. And if we change that offset, then that means that they're, we're applying kind of a minimum opacity to the line. So for example, if I say 0.5, then none of the lines will ever be below 0.5 opacity. Um, and so we can set that to something reasonable like 0.2. And then we can decrease the max distance again. This is starting to look pretty cool. Uh, still a little bit busy. Uh, and this might be what you're after, this kind of fast moving line thing. Uh, but my immediate reaction to this was that the lines are moving too fast. So how do we make the lines move slower? Well, the Perlin noise generator is, is making these points vary over time based on its understanding of the internal time of the composition. And if we want to manipulate the way the Perlin noise patch understands time, we can right click and set the time base to external. And what that does is it exposes this patch time input. It's initially set to zero and you can see mm -hmm. that while this is at zero, the composition is frozen. If we set this to one, we're basically telling the Perlin noise generator to jump ahead one second into the future, and you can see now we're at the state of the composition in one second. <clears throat> and so we can use an integrator to uh, increase the patch time over time. If we set the integrator's value to one, then it's moving just as fast as it was before. But we can decrease this value to like 0.5, and now it's moving at half speed. Or we can say 0.1, and now it's moving at 10th speed. And this is starting to look a little bit more kind of dreamy. I really like the way that that looks. And we can also set this to a negative value. And now it starts to move backwards. So this is pretty cool. And we'll see how we can use this to create cool effects. There comes a time when you're working on a Quartz Composer composition where you have something that's looking really cool, and it's time to start figuring out which parameters you want to modulate in your composition so that when you import it into software like VDMX or Resolume, uh, you'll be able to control those parameters. So uh, one, uh, the one idea for a parameter that we could control is the number of iterations. You can imagine like if you had a MIDI controller where you could control the number of points, uh, that'd be pretty cool. So uh, let's right click on its iterations and we'll say publish input and we'll name it uh, num points. And we can double click on this and rename the patch num points as well to keep things consistent. So we're in our top level root macro patch right now. And when we publish something from the top level root macro patch, uh, you can see that when we don't have any patches selected, the num points parameter is still visible. And that means that it's going to be exposed uh, on the composition level. So it'll be exposed in VDMX. So what other, what other parameters are we interested in? Well, one idea would be the value of this integrator. Uh, so let's insert an input splitter. And let's rename this speed. And then let's publish the input there. Now, why did I insert an input splitter? Well, the reason is, is that when you split out an input like this, you can select it and press Command-2. And then you can control certain settings uh, about the value, like for example, the min and max value. So let's say uh, the speed can vary between one and negative one. And now we have a slider for it and we can scrub back and forth through time. Cool. Uh, what other parameters are we interested in? Well, one I think that's pretty uh, interesting is this max distance. So let's right click that, publish the input. Now it's published to this level. So we need to right click this, publish the input again. Now it's now it's published at this level. And now we right click and insert an input splitter for max distance. And right click, publish the input, name it max distance, command two. And we can set the minimum value to zero, maximum value to one, doesn't really matter. Now we can vary the max distance. Cool. Uh, one last one we can do is this offset value. So this is kind of like the minimum, the minimum opacity of the lines. 
So let's publish offset as, uh, let's name this minimum opacity. And we need to publish it up the chain like before, publish minimum opacity, and then we insert an input splitter for it, and we publish it and name it minimum opacity. Again, command two, uh, let's do a minimum value of zero, maximum value of one. And now we can control the, the minimum opacity.